Camp on Awana, we hold you in our hearts, and when we think about you... It makes me wanna fart! Dang it, Budnick! That was the last straw! Hey everyone, welcome to Mike's Little Lookbacks. Um, I'm, I'm Mike. On this series, I'll be journeying back to various movies, TV shows, cartoons, and video games from my childhood. Unlike some of the other shows on this channel where I go episode by episode through a series, these will be one-off episodes, each tackling a different property. To kick things off, we are going back to what I consider the golden era of Nickelodeon with my little look back, at Salute Your Shorts. Salute Your Shorts was a teen sitcom focusing on the life of campers at the fictional Camp Onawana that aired on Nickelodeon from 1991 to 1992. The series was created by Steve Slavkin and was based on his book, Salute Your Shorts, Life at Summer Camp, which he co-wrote with Thomas Hill. Slavkin would also provide the voice of the unseen camp director, Dr. Khan, who would make camp announcements over the PA system. This is Dr. Khan. For afternoon activities, we'll be holding a ping-pong tournament in the lodge. The winner receives a free pint of tomatoes picked from my very own garden. In 1990, Nickelodeon was under pressure to create original programming to compete with other established networks with kids' programming blocks. A pilot for Salute Your Shorts was commissioned and filmed at the Griffith Park Boys Camp in March of 1990. It was directed by Randall Miller and starred Ian Giotti, Danny Cooksey, Kirk Bailey, Michael Bauer, David Tom, Kelly Parker, Terry Johnston, and Alexandra Curran. Now, if you don't recognize many of those names, it's because most of the roles were recast once the show was picked up in 1991. In fact, the only actors from the pilot to transfer over were those playing Ugg, Budnick, and Donkey Lips. There was also a dynamic shift from the pilot to the actual show. In the pilot, Ugg is more serious and believes in strict discipline, whereas in the show, he's more of an idiot and usually on the receiving end of a joke. As far as the campers, Donkey Lips was the main antagonist, with Budnick being his sidekick in the pilot. But by the time they filmed the actual show, the actor playing Budnick had grown taller than the actor playing Donkey Lips, so their roles were reversed. Look, I'm not just saying this because I'm as short as Tom Cruise, but that's just heightest. The final cast would be made up of Kirk Bailey as camp counselor Kevin Ugg Lee. Wait, they called him Ugg because of his last name so they could get a cheap ugly joke out of it? It's not true, Kirk. I'm sure you've grown into a very handsome man. You know, not, not that you were a troll back then, but I mean, let's be real, you're not like traditionally attractive, but you know, you're, you know, still good looking in a, in a way, in a, you know, kind of grow on you, kind of like, you know, if I were like a mail carrier that was, you know, working the summer camp racket, I'd, I'd be into it. <laughs> let's, let's move on. Danny Cooksey, or the kid from Terminator 2 who had John Connor's back. John, not now, not now. Hey, man, there's this cop scoping for me. Check it out. Returned from the pilot to play Bobby Budnick. Michael Bauer would also reprise his role as Eddie, Donkey Lips Gelfin. Trevor Eister would play boy genius Sponge Harris. Megan Berwick would play the tree-hugging ZZ Ziff. Venus DeMilo would play Telly Radford. Venus would also go on to appear in many other 90s staples, such as Family Matters and Sister Sister. Heidi Lucas would play the stuck-up Dina Alexander. And the series lead would actually be two different characters played by two different actors across the show's two seasons. Season 1 would feature Michael Stein, played by Eric MacArthur, as the camp newcomer who is constantly at odds with camp bully Budnick. Eric did not return for Season 2, so his character developed chickenpox and didn't return to camp. Instead, Ronald Ronnie Pinsky, a preppy ladies' man... Uh... Boy? Lady... Ladies' boy? No, that doesn't sound right. A preppy played by Blake Soper, would show up to challenge Budnick's alpha camper status. Across two seasons, the show featured daily life at Camp Onawana. Fun fact, the name Onawana is actually a play on the phrase, I don't want to. Look, me and the boys have been doing some talking, and we think you've been hanging out with a bad crowd, so we're sending you to camp for the summer. No, Onawana. Hey, what do you think you are, a wise guy? Forget about it. Looking back on the show now, because I used to love it so much, I never realized how short a run it actually had with only 26 episodes. The show was very popular for its age demographic, being the second highest rated cable television series for children aged 6 to 11 at the start of its second season. Heck, the show holds a 75% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. So why did Nickelodeon cancel the series in its prime? Well, a number of factors went into this. 
Nickelodeon Studios was located in Orlando, Florida at the time, but seasons one and two of Salute Your Shorts were filmed in Southern California, with exteriors shooting on a soundstage in Sun Valley, and exteriors shooting at Franklin Canyon Park and Griffith Park Boys Camp, with some exteriors being shot in miniature. As you might have guessed from the filming locations, the cast was also local to the Los Angeles area. This became an issue when Nickelodeon wanted to move production to their studios in Florida for season three. Most of the cast was unwilling to relocate, which clearly presented a problem, but that wasn't the only issue. During the filming of season two, show creator Steve Slavkin walked out on the show in protest over Nickelodeon refusing to give the cast raises for a potential third and fourth seasons. Slavkin never came back and season two finished filming without him. According to multiple sources, Nickelodeon was notorious for underpaying child actors, which probably didn't help motivate the cast to relocate across country for terrible wages. The final nail in the coffin of the show was the fact that Nickelodeon was being pressured by its parent company, Viacom, to reduce show budgets across the board so that MTV could fund the production of Beavis and Butthead. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> for me, what resonated with Salute Your Shorts was the fantasy of what summer camp was. I mean, when you think summer camp, a lot of fun movies come to mind. I'll tell you one thing, we are not nice people. Not tonight, we're not. <laughs> But Salute Your Shorts was all about the kids at the camp. I've always wanted the Salute Your Shorts summer camp experience, but that's why they call it a fantasy, I guess. Uh, I had two camp experiences as a kid, and let's just say mistakes were made. In sixth grade, we had a week-long field trip to science camp at Lake Arrowhead in California. What should have been a fun time turned awkward when the popular couple in our class broke up at the start of the trip, and then all the girls hated all the boys and vice versa for the whole week. There was also probably some science stuff that happened, but I don't remember any of that. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's not summer camp. And you're right. But I did go to one of those as well, and somehow it was worse than the science camp experience. My summer camp was also located in the Lake Arrowhead area of Southern California, but was a different camp entirely. Upon arriving at camp, I had some of my belongings stolen, I got bullied by some kids from LA, paid some other kids protection money, and even back then I was pretty sure those were the kids who stole my stuff, but if I was paying them to protect me, clearly I had not the physical fortitude to do anything about it. Let's see. Uh, I also got violently ill and threw up on another kid's head in the middle of the night. Not really sure who had it worse there. But on a positive note, I did manage to guilt a girl into dancing with me at the end of camp party using the power of pity. Oh, good times. Do you have any nightmare camp stories of your own? Let me know in the comments. Despite the popularity of the show, it's incredibly hard to find these days. I was able to track down a few episodes on the internet, and the episode I'm going to look back on today is the 13th episode of Season 1, Environmental Party. We open on ZZ picking up litter around the camp. When she goes to sort some of the recycling, she wakes up Ugg who's trying to take a nap. Now, I don't know what Ugg was doing the night before, but he's in that real tired place where he'll just agree to anything to be left alone. ZZ says they have a huge environmental problem that needs to be fixed right away. Ugg makes her the environmental general so that she'll go away, but that's not Sleepy Ugg's problem. That's future Wide Awake Ugg's problem. We cut to Budnick launching a very ill-conceived plan to get honey from a beehive to sell. I give him points for his enterprising spirit, but putting his life... Well... Nah, I, I guess he's not really putting his own life in danger, just sponges, so... I guess he gets points for that too. I formally withdraw my complaint. Carry on, gentlemen. Sponge! We then cut to Telly and Dina creating what has to be one of the biggest fire hazards I've ever seen. ZZ exercises her power as environmental general by shutting off the water and power to the bathroom. Uh, she must also gain teleportation with her new role because she immediately appears in the bathroom doorway and that's not where you would turn off the water and power from. Also, I don't think she actually knows how to turn the power off because her and Dina get into a pissing match, turning the light switch to the bathroom on and off, and turning off the lights is not the same as turning off the power. You can't give me gas. Back at the beehive, a new plan is in play, and this one looks almost as terrible as the first one. 
As the boys approach the hive, this happens. All right, now look inside the beehive, honey, and Come jump. On. You called him, honey? I did not. You kinda did, though. Did not! Sponge opens the hive to discover that it's not a beehive at all. Inside, he claims to have found some dirty old magazines, to which Budnick seeks some clarification. Dirty old magazines? Or old dirty magazines? The boys are disappointed to discover they're just home and garden type magazines. Budnick seems more disappointed in the money he's not making from selling honey than he is about not finding actual dirty magazines, and at that age, I have to question his priorities. Logical. Dina and Telly arrive back at their bunk to discover ZZ has turned it into her recycling headquarters, causing the following outburst. Are you out of your granola munching, whole wheat tied, I'd say the planet mind? Whoa, Telly, language. This is a kid's show. Don't make me use this. Listen, Mother Nature. I've had it with you. Uh, rude. Anyway, Telly storms off and Dina explains to ZZ that if she wants people to go along with her agenda, she can't just go around turning off their power and filling their bunks with trash. Dina says she needs to make it fun for everyone and cites something that her mother does. She runs a charity event with grace and charm along with a really big party. This gives ZZ an idea. A party for the environment. Go planet! Easy guys, we'll get to you another time. Dina helps ZZ set up a party with a good turnout. Dina promised everyone free food and entertainment, but to get in, they have to bring something to recycle. A fully awake Ugg is present, but he's got an important phone call to make to Mona, a romantic interest that was established in the previous episode. While on the call, Ugg tries to set up a future date with her, but he's just as clueless about romance as he is about camp counseling. Oh no, I'm not embarrassed by a woman who does better than me. No, uh -uh. but h how do you feel about roller skating? While Ugg is distracted, Dina gets everyone's attention so that ZZ can sing them all a little song. Well, that's nice. Just a sweet, wholesome song about protecting the Earth, I imagine. Captain Planet, he's our hero. Gonna take pollution down to zero. What did, what did I just say? You'll get your chance in the future. Jeez, those Planeteers are really needy. Anyway, ZZ's song goes a little differently. Oil spills, toxic waste. I don't know why, but I suddenly feel like it's all my fault. You know, I think she's got a future in music. People pay to get yelled at in a whiny voice all the time. You ever been to an Avril Lavigne concert? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna pay for that one in the comments. <laughs> Dina tries to salvage the night by getting to the raffle. The winner gets to dance with her, but to her dread, it seems that Donkey Lips bought all the tickets. Dina asks Budnick for some musical accompaniment for the Can Can Stomp, but... Uh, I feel like I'm hearing every instrument except the electric guitar. <laughs> Budnick gets bored and decides to go off book with his performance, creating a... recycling... mosh pit? Question mark? <laughs> Things escalate quickly into a classic Salute Your Shorts food fight. When Ugg realizes what's going on, he tries to intervene only to get a bowl of punch in the face. I mean, if you're going to get punched in the face, might as well be a fruit punch. <laughs> Do you get it? Because of the punch, but like, instead of a fist, it's, it's, never mind. Never mind. Sorry. Later that night, we find Dina and ZZ sitting in the aftermath of the party. Dina saw it as a complete success, while ZZ thinks it was one of the most wasteful events in the history of camp. Dina is tired of ZZ's whining and storms off. The next day, we cut to ZZ sitting with her recycling by the side of the road, until this happens. You don't want to dance with me today? Who is this gypsy, and why is he so friendly with this little girl? And while we're on the subject, where is the adult supervision of any kind at this camp? These kids are allowed to do anything they want with zero ramifications. And don't mistake my intensity for anger. It's 100% pure jealousy. Why was it real summer camp like this? Ours not the reason why, ours what to do and die. The recycler is Mr. Spanakopita, and he's there to buy ZZ's garbage. It also sounds like he'll whack Budnick for the right price. ZZ tells him that she's ready to give up because people won't change. He tells her that it's always darkest before the dawn, and he also tells her that she has $51 worth of aluminum. Mr. Spanakopita tells her to keep the money away from Budnick, citing that he'd probably do anything for it. 
which gives ZZ an idea. He would do anything for this money. <laughs> and so the rest of camp! Back at camp, ZZ tries to get everyone's attention, which doesn't work until she starts waving cash around. Sounded like fifty dollars. No, fifty-one, mostly tens, few fives. Okay, that is just spooky. Zizi tells the others that recycling earns money, and she lays out a plan that will result in a trip to the water slide, not the water park, which would entail multiple slides, just water slide singular. I guess at a nickel a can, Zizi was being realistic. Although, doing the math, just to get to fifty-one dollars, she would have needed one thousand twenty cans, which is just way too many cans. Even factoring in other recyclable materials, she would have needed way more than she gave to her magical recycling fairy to get $51. Anyway, with the gang on board, ZZ declares, Opa! Uh-uh, don't do that. You're no Mr. Spanakopita. Opa! We cut to a montage of the campers recycling set to the William Tell Overture, which always makes me think of the Lone Ranger. No, 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 not that Lone Ranger, no. Anyway, the campers are also composting, gardening, and Budnick even tries stealing the copper piping from the showers to sell. <laughs> that guy's gonna be a great criminal someday. The campers finally succeed in cleaning up camp and getting enough money to get a trip to the water slide. While it's being set up, Michael brings up the moral quandary about all the work they did to help the environment for the wrong reasons. It then gets put to a vote if they should selfishly spend the money on going to the water slide or spend it on the camp to improve it for the future. Now, of course, because of the message the show is trying to send to the viewing audience, the campers obviously make the right decision. Water slide! Well, f me. I mean, that's probably the decision I would have made, but still, I didn't see that coming. We cut to the next day where Budnick is all set to go to the water slide, only to find out that the rest of the kids changed their mind after he left and spent the money to buy a maple tree to teach future campers the joy of nature. Great. Now I look like the asshole because I said I'd choose the water park. I bet Budnick's furious. Mad. I'm jazzed. Am I in hell? What is going on here? You know, maple syrup runs for about $65 a gallon, and this thing is gonna pour out money. Okay, there's the Budnick I know and love. The others tell him he's not going to drill into their tree, and he argues that he is, until they gang up and chase after him, presumably to murder him and feed him to the tree. Well, maybe if this were another Nickelodeon show. Hey, watch it, man! This episode was a great season one ender for the series. You get a solid message about protecting the environment while still getting all your favorite salute your short shenanigans. If I had one complaint, it's that I could have used a little bit more UG in this episode, and a lot more Mr. Spanakopita. <laughs> This was a fun trip down Nostalgia Lane. I hadn't seen an episode of Salute Your Short since it originally aired, and I think it still holds up today. I do think reboots are a bit out of control right now, but I wouldn't mind a Salute Your Shorts reboot if you could get the original creator involved and bring back some of the old cast as camp counselors. Wait. Wait, do summer camps even exist anymore? Like, do kids still go outside? Ah well. Look, if they do bring it back, they should get Ugg to come back as the new camp announcement guy. Dr. Ugg. Dr. Ugg. What a horrible thought. Indians used to rub this on their skin to keep the mosquitoes away. Um, I'm Ugg. Uh-huh. I think that's poison sumac. Hey, I'm the expert here. Just take the picture. What are your thoughts on Salute Your Shorts? Did you see it as a kid? What was your favorite episode? Who was your favorite camper? Let me know in the comments below. Also, my next little look back has not yet been decided, so if there's something from your childhood you want to see me tackle, mention it in the comments. Well, I'll see you all next time. I'm going to go binge some Avril Lavigne songs. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon to be notified when more Little Look Back episodes go up. And we've got some other cool nostalgic shows on the channel, so stick around, you might find something else that you like.